what's up guys for everyone who doesn't know my name is nicole mercedes if you are new here welcome and if you're coming back welcome back so today like the description says um in the title we're going to be talking about self-confidence self-esteem and how to build it so let's get going so self-control is defined as having trust in one's abilities or qualities and um the judgment that we have for ourselves self-confidence is crucial to your health and your psychological well-being it is very important and something that we all should be working on and should have and possess in our toolkit this skill set can help you become more successful in your personal and your professional life so there are a few benefits to having self-confidence so one of them, it's going to be better performance. So instead of wasting your time and your energy on wondering if you're good enough or something's going to turn out well, if you put all those efforts into actually just doing the tasks that you have, you actually will turn out better than what you were doing before. You always perform better when you do feel confident. It also makes you have healthier relationships. So besides being confident in yourself and like loving yourself, it's gonna be able to give you the capacity to understand and love other people, but also it's going to give you the foresight to see if you are in an unhealthy situation and be able to get yourself out of it. Because now you know that you deserve better and you also know that that relationship will not serve you any further. Another benefit is you're gonna be open to trying new things. So you're not gonna be scared of like, what something doesn't work out, you're gonna be like, ah, might as well try, dive right in and, and see what happens. And if it doesn't work out, you learn something. Yeah. Putting yourself out there is a lot easier when you ha have more confidence in your ability. So that means trying new hobbies. It also means if you're trying to go for a promotion at work, or if you've been applying to a new job, you gotta have confidence in yourself to be able to know that your abilities are good enough to propel you in your next journey in life. Also having resilience is knowing the capabilities that if you're always gonna be able to bounce back if something else happens in life, which we all are gonna go through trials and tribulations that are gonna affect us. But the most important thing is, is the resilience you have to make sure that you know like you won't be down for long. And having self-confidence makes you a more resilient person. So what if you are not self-confident? There are so many things that you can try to do to help build that skill because that is a skill. That is an asset. And just because you don't have that right now does not mean that you cannot build it. So you just have to practice it. So here are a few tips and like few habits that we should put into place in our life to help us uh, get better and help you build up that toolkit and that repertoire that you'll be able to pull out and build on to help you become a more confident and more uh have a higher confidence and a higher self-esteem so let's dive in one of the first things you need to do is stop comparing yourself to other people i know this hard because <laughs> i do that all the time um not as much as i used to but it's human nature and that's if you're comparing yourself to you know how someone else looks or comparing your finances to some of your friends like your friend's salary not realizing that it also depends on if you guys are even in the same field but that's besides the point you shouldn't be comparing yourself to other people in it's general known that you know it's not healthy to make comparisons between you and another person in 2018 there was a study and they found out that the more people compared themselves to other people the more that they became envious the more envious that they became then the more upset that they became and unhappy with themselves so it's definitely a slippery slope so if you find yourself being envious of someone else's life and something that they have and you want it the first thing you need to do is remind yourself that you should not be comparing yourself to other people also think about what you are good at what are your skill sets what are the things that you know that you do great at and that you can smash even though since we were kids we were conditioned to believe that life is a competition that has to be won especially for a lot of us if you were like like me honors can stuff you had if you weren't first you were last you need to remember that every single person on this planet is running their own race what is meant for you will be for you 
you cannot compare yourself to other people it will drive you crazy so you need to just stick in your lane go forward have the blinders on focus on your tasks and what you're doing and not what your neighbors are doing secondly you need to surround yourself with positive people you should be paying attention closely closely to what your friends and your family do how do they make you feel are they really supportive or are they like making fun of you are they constantly judging you or are they are they uplifting you to be a better version of yourself the more time you spend with these people the more they are going to affect your mood people don't realize that like, if you spend whoever you spend your time with subconsciously whatever they do or say to you can infiltrate to your brain so if you are surrounding yourself with negative nancy's if you continue to live amongst people who mean you no good and they want to see you fail if you keep dwelling in that space then you're not going to be able to rise above it you need to root those people out you need to say goodbye to them you need to cut the cord and keep it pushing they do not mean you well and you they have no place they should have no place in your life because they don't deserve that they don't deserve access to you okay. nextly you need to take care of your body i know i've previously talked about this in another video you cannot feel good about yourself if you're continuously abusing your body your body people keep saying your body is a temple but it is you get one body so you need to take care of it so there are different things that you can do in order to be mindful of your body and take care of it so dieting don't eat like crap i mean clearly you can have a burger and fries or whatever don't make that be your only meals fuel yourself you know what it feels like if you're eating healthy like if you're getting in the amount of fruits and vegetables you should be eating getting some fiber in there getting the protein but healthy ones you know the difference between you eating like a healthy meal and then something that's super bogged down with a crazy amount of carbs and oils and grease and like you feel sick the next day you can physically you can feel the difference and you need to fuel your body so that you'll be able to exercise another thing we should be moving 30 minutes a day at the minimum 30 minutes a day for like at least five days a week you should just find an exercise that you like to do whether it's yoga pilates even just walking uh kickboxing spin class whatever just find something that you like to do and just try it and you just have to keep moving it doesn't and sleep is crucial like i've said before y'all know i love to sleep sleeping is so calming it helps you uh, regenerate your body uh, rejuvenate yourself it can also take a toll on your emotions if you are not getting enough sleep you know when you're not getting enough sleep you get like four hours you feel super cranky you don't want to be around people it's annoying we're supposed to get about seven to eight hours of sleep a day so go to bed <laughs> next tip you should be kind to yourself being kind to yourself showing yourself compassion is key to having like self-confidence you want to treat yourself with kindness when you fail or you have some type of setback you don't want to keep bashing yourself like girl you suck you suck you suck you suck that's not helpful this helps you become more emotionally flexible and will eventually help you navigate like heavier situations because you'll be more in tune with yourself and be able to really like get to the core root of what's wrong and then you can like make better decisions that way so next you want to face your fears facing your fears is super important <laughs> stop putting things off until you feel more confident if you don't you don't have to be perfect to start but you have to start to be perfect oh that's how that goes but yeah you need to just like dive in and try like try something new so you should try and face something that is you know one of your major like insecurities and think of it this way as like you're doing an experiment so you're just trying to test the waters and see what happens and then you know you can rationalize it that way like oh we're just trying to see see what happens 
and then go from there. Then you might realize like, oh, I was like worried for no reason. But you have to like put this into practice. Like all these things are, are practical skill sets that you have to put into practice in order to build upon later for you to actually gain a higher level of self-confidence. So personal branding is another skill that you should be working on to help you become better self advocate, uh, have higher self-esteem. So if you project a more confident and more positive self-image out into the world and to people, you're more than likely going to receive positive feedback back. And then, you know, that could just be a positive uh, loop of effects to come your way. But you have to put it into practice. Like you have to try. All of these things are things that you have to implement into your life in order to like get them to work. So another thing, you should be reviewing your past accomplishments. So write down like 10 things that you know that you've done well, whether it was like for school, for work, personally, and like write a list of 10 things down. So anytime that you're feeling down on yourself, or like I said before, you see other people doing something and you're like, okay, but well, what are you good at? Everyone is good at something. Everyone has positive and great qualities and have done amazing things. You just have to remind yourself of what, what am I good at? So you want to look at these achievements that you have accomplished and you want to make them into like positive affirmations. And since I talked about affirmations, you want to use positive affirmations, but use them correctly. So positive affirmations like I'm going to be a great success are super popular, but some statements like that have like one major flaw. Uh, they tend to make people who have low self-esteem feel worse about themselves. They're like, yeah, I don't think I'm as I'm successful. I'm going to be successful. Like that's one of the issues is they don't think highly of themselves. So you want to tweak these affirmations into something that can be a little bit more believable and maybe something that feels a little bit more attainable. So for that other affirmation, you want to tweak it to like, I will persevere until I become successful. So it gives a the notion of like, okay, I'm not perfect and no, I'm going to be successful. I'm gonna keep chipping away and doing what I need to do until I can get to that goal. Yeah. Also, which I know this is one of the things that is super hard for people to do, is learn how to take a compliment. I used to be bad at that. I was like, oh, it's so uncomfortable and weird. But like, no, yep, thank you. I, <laughs> I'm great, I know, thanks. Stop. <laughs> it's a thing like when we feel bad about ourselves, we are more prone to not accept the compliment, which is super backwards and not helpful because that's when you need it the most. Have someone like pump you up. So what you want to do is to set a goal in order to um, tolerate compliments whenever they're given to you and then to just receive them and also to say thank you. But you don't sit here like, oh no, we're not gonna down, we're done downplaying. Like if someone says, you look so good today, thanks. And that's it. You can give a compliment back if you want. Although a lot of people do that too because they still feel weird. So you feel like you have to say something to somebody else in order you know, to take the onus and like the pressure or the, um, what is it? Like the whole view on you. No, when someone compliments you, say thank you and then keep it pushing. I think the more you um, you don't deny or rebuff the um, compliment, the easier over time that it's going to get and then you won't be uncomfortable anymore. So yeah, that all will diminish in time, but you have to practice in order to be like, I feel okay now with receiving. We have to, if you can give compliments, you have to be able to receive them and be open to it. So of course, everyone is in favor of having, you know, high self-confidence and self-esteem, but most of us don't realize like it can be like very hard and like it's cold, it's hard to cultivate this to actually achieve it. So brain scans have shown that people who have a higher self-esteem 
um, they're more likely to experience, um, let's see, like common emotional wounds, like anything like rejection or failure, they perceive it, perceive it as less painful and something that they can actually like bounce back from and move on quickly compared to other people who have a low self-esteem that if something happens it can just like be world shattering and then you may never recover or your recovery is going to be like 10 times slower than like what it should have been for yourself with the higher self-esteem and higher self-confidence you will have um let's see you be less vulnerable to stress, less vulnerable to anxiety. And when you are stressed, you will release less cortisol in your bloodstream than you normally would have if you didn't have like a health, like a healthy self-esteem. One of the things is like practice makes perfect. You're not gonna get this overnight if you haven't been practicing this or you haven't even been uh, taught this like as a kid and you, it wasn't built up into you. You have to be able to start like brick, lay brick by brick. You have to, in order, just like a building, you have to lay down the foundation. If your foundation is crap, it's going to collapse. So you're building your foundation of your self-esteem and your self-worth and your self-confidence. And the more you practice, you're adding another brick on a brick. And eventually you're gonna have a tall ass building that's sturdy as hell and nothing is going to be able to shake you and that will be beautiful just try it what do you have to lose because you're already struggling <laughs> so you might as well try something new and see what happens so you know practice makes perfect get her done so Thank you guys so much for visiting and watching this video so please like like comment and subscribe and you know watch another video that was previous and i'm gonna get out of here so peace and love and blessings to you all bye guys